Hello from AI Sciences, and welcome to Mastering Python for Data Science. Everybody these days are talking about Python, talking about data science. So you might be wondering what Python is, what data science is, what's the link in between, and so on. By the end of this course, you'll be able to learn what Python and data science is, and precisely what is their link, what is the connection in between. So um, if, if you are really starting your career or if you are thinking about uh, going towards data science, AI sciences might be the best place for you to begin with. If you're serious about learning Python, stay until the end of this video. Otherwise, it's useless to start and stop in the middle. So first we talk about why Python? I mean, what is that thing about what what is that special thing about Python? Python was first introduced in 1980. However, after a lot of improvements, updates, um, it was officially launched as a full-fledged programming language in 1989. It was created by Godot and Rossum. Python is an open source programming language, which means it is it is it is accessible by everybody. Although open source you can still use it for commercial purposes. The main goal of Python programming language was to keep the code easier to understand and easier to write. Python's huge library enables data scientists to work faster with the ready to use tools. Python is dynamically typed. So, so the variables are defined automatically. It is more readable and uses lesser code to perform the same task as compared to several other programming languages. It is flexible, portable, and can run on any platform easily. It is scalable and can be integrated with other third-party software easily. Python programming is easy to use and has simple and fast learning curve. New data scientists can easily understand Python with its easy to use syntax and better readability. Python also provides plenty of data processing tools that helps in better handling of the data. Python is important for data scientists because uh, it provides a vast variety of applications used in data science. It also provides more flexibility in the field of machine learning and deep learning. It has got a lot of packages like uh, TensorFlow, Keras, and Theano. And, uh, that is, I mean, helping data scientists to develop specifically the trending deep learning algorithms very, very quickly. As is the case with many other programming languages, it is available, it, it's, it's the available libraries that lead to Python success. Around 72,000 of them in the Python package index called PyPy. And they are available, mature, tested, and growing constantly. Python is free, open source, and consequently, anyone can write a library package to extend its functionality. And guess, data science has been an early beneficiary of these, particularly pandas, the big daddy of all of them. And we are going to learn pandas here as well in this course. The other great thing about Python's broad and diverse base is that there are millions of users who are happy to offer advice and suggestions. When you get stuck in something, the chances are someone else has been stuck there first. So with that, I guess it's pretty much clear that Python indeed is very, very powerful language, particularly for, for data science. But, but guess what? There are so many IDEs, there are so many code editors in which you can write code for Python. Do you know what an IDE is? Okay, let me start from a little beginning. As you start your coding journey, many of you prefer coding in um, maybe a text editor like Notepad++, where you write a code and then open a terminal window and execute your code. When there is an error detected in your code, you switch back to the text editor, correct your error and typos, run the code again from the terminal. That's fine, I'm in happy. But typically for large scale problems, however, you not only have to code, but you also need to make sure your code works in all scenarios, which means you also need a testing module. 
Many times you have multiple coding and testing files and switching between editor and terminal back and forth will become confusing, inefficient, and irritating. So an environment is needed where you can write, run, play with your code all at one place. The one that provides you with the capability, capability of not just writing the code, but testing your code, running your code, highlighting your syntax, maybe a bracket matching, auto completion of your code, debugging, code suggestions, and many more features. Such a thing is called Integrated Development Environment or IDE. And there are several IDEs for, for Python, for example, Jupyter Notebook, PyCharm, Spider, Canopy, Vim, Atom, and, and so many others. But for the past couple of years, Jupyter Notebook has been gaining a lot of popularity in terms of coding and debugging. These notebooks have been redefining the concept of IDE and are adding more and more features to it. Jupyter was first introduced in 2014 and af after its predecessor IPython. And from that date, it is considered to be a bliss for the coding community. Jupyter loosely stands for Julia, Python, and R, but it supports several other languages as well, not just Julia, Python, and R. And by the way, this, Pyth uh, this Python, Julia, and R, these are uh, specialized kind of languages. I mean, the more, most popular popularity of these languages due to the data science. They're, they're good for data science. Mm, in in Jupyter, you can you can create the documents. There are markdown cells. You can write HTML in it. You can write LaTeX in it. The mathematical formula you like. It it's a web based application, client server architecture with which is easy to use and allows you to create, analyze, and manipulate documents in the form of notebooks. Since it's a web web interface, you can integrate many of the existing web libraries to it. It has so many functionalities, so many functionalities. You can write a formula in LaTeX, run a Python code, and visualize, for example, a, a raw audio signal all at one, the same notebook. And PyCharm is also good. It, it's great. Uh, it's more like uh, handling, it, it's best in handling uh, many more uh, instances, many more uh, I mean, code files and scripts together, linking them together. And uh, it has also a lot of functionalities and features. I mean, a full-fledged IDE. Um, but, but I mean, getting started with PyCharm, um, it, it is from JetBeans. And the one who has not used other IDs of JetBeans before, it will take a time. I mean, it will take a good amount of time to just getting started with PyCharm. And uh, similarly, Spider is a good uh, IDE. It comes pre-installed with Anaconda distribution. It, uh, it Its look and feel is much like MATLAB and Thought Canopy. It is also, I mean, it's a great IDE. Again, the MATLAB users will find much similarities between and Thought Canopy and um, MATLAB, Spider and MATLAB and, and, and these kind of things. And there are several others. Well, particularly in data science, Jupyter Notebook is trending. I mean, there are statistics uh, collected from the people and the, and the users of this notebook are growing. Uh, the student community is using notebook. The professional community is using the notebook. The data scientists, the government agencies, and, and several. I mean, in each and every field, whether you go region-wise, whether you go the job nature-wise, you'll find Jupyter Notebook at the top. And the reason, one reason is, um, it's it's interactive, it's web-based, uh, and the most powerful uh, feature of Jupyter Notebook is it is too simple. You just get started, and even even with its simplicity, it is as powerful as the rest. So uh, in this particular course, we will be using Jupyter Notebook for coding in Python, particularly for data science and and several other stuff. So um, First of all, let's see how can you install Python. There are several ways of installing Python. You can go directly to python.org and install it from there, but we recommend that you should you should install it from Anaconda distribution. Um, if you go to anaconda.com distribution, you will get a 3.7 variant, both for 64-bit processor and 32-bit system either way. 
So you can download it for, for example, for Windows, for Mac, for Mac and for Linux. Uh, for Windows, for example, if you download uh, according to your uh, system specifications, then and, and that will be an executable file. You just follow the instructions and get it installed. Um, the Jupyter Notebook is pre-installed with uh, Anaconda. I mean, several other libraries are pre-installed with Anaconda. Um, uh, I mean, dependency controls and several other things are well managed by Anaconda. So it, it is good to install Python using Anaconda. So once you will uh, once you will follow all the uh, uh, exe, uh, executable file instructions and get this Anaconda file installed, then uh, on Windows, for example, you can just write uh, Anaconda prompt. And from here, you can just run it. And uh, after running this, you will see, for example, this kind of prompt, the black prompt. And on this prompt, you can just write Jupyter Notebook and press enter. Uh, after pressing enter, you will you will see this kind of uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, interface in front of you, and that's what the Jupyter Notebook is. And from here, we will be. Uh, creating files and managing files and everything. Let me let me let me just uh, give you um, let me just give you um, give you a running form of this. So why not? So for example, here I type anaconda so anaconda prompt here because I have pleased all this. I can run it as an administrator or I can just run it as it is. So this will open up like um, this and then I just type Jupyter Notebook and I press enter. Um, it will take a while, um, not not that long, but um, it will run quickly. So so let's just wait for. So after that, you will be seeing this kind of uh, this kind of interface in front of you, and that's what exactly uh, the 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 Anaconda is. So, um, but um, I mean, you can install it on Ubuntu by just um, by just um, getting the Linux version of it, get it in, get it copied, and then on your terminal, just type this command here. The installer will run, and then just press Enter. It will ask you to certain instructions. Press Yes, and you're good to go. Then to launch it, simply go to your folder where it is installed and just type Jupyter Notebook as before. And for Mac OS, again, you just uh, select the Mac Mac version of it, install it, and then there is an Anaconda Navigator in the launch pad. Go to that and then just click on the launch button on the Jupyter Notebook and you will see the same interface as before. So that's it. That's how you can install, I mean, the Jupyter Notebook is there in Anaconda. Once you install Anaconda, Jupyter is there for you. So um, that's about uh, installing Python and Jupyter Notebook and all that stuff. Let's just quickly go to write just one, um, our very first uh, program in, in, in Jupyter Notebook. Let, let's just write one program in Jupyter Notebook. So you go to this, let me just uh, make it a little bigger in size so that you can uh, you can see it very well. So uh, here you select new and then Python three, and a file will open up in front of you. That's the name of the file. You can change the name of the file. For example, you can write the name as mustring uh, Python for data science, whatever the name you suggest. Um, Part one. Uh, so that might be a name for for this notebook, and that that's what it is. Um, this is a cell. I mean, here you will write your code. Let, let me just write the very first uh, uh, "Hello World" program. Hello World. Uh, when I will write here "Hello World," and then I will press Shift Enter it will execute and will show me the result. Um, th these these cells are, have two different kinds. Uh, one, uh, I mean, one is the markdown and one is the code. 
in code when it is in the code form you can write the python code in it if it is in the form of markdown for example if you select markdown here then you can write for example latex here html here you can annotate all your document with descriptions and whatnot for example if i just write this uh, uh, if i just write for example Um, for example variables and operators for example so that might be my heading if I just press shift enter it will now become heading or I can write much more uh, than this I, 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 I can write full descriptions I can attach images I can write I mean HTML code and whatever inside so between the cells some cells can be coding cells and some cells can, some cells can be markdown cells and we can switch in between no problem again uh, in in markdown cell you can also write for example the latex um, so here um, so here for example if i want to write the mathematical equations a equals x plus y so they will they will appear like the math code in front of you so you can annotate all your document at once and you can then save this file um, as or you can download this file as uh, as as in several different for example contexts in several different formats so download as latex markdown uh, pdf rs python slides i mean there are so many formats uh, or or simply in html to just because that's ready-made uh, web page for you so uh, that's our uh, first uh, just uh, program in 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 Jupyter notebook and this is that simple you just in in the cells you just start writing and everything is just working out uh, mostly we will be talking about code cells but uh, if you want to see uh, if you want to see the complete help of this the help is also available here if you just go to keyboard shortcuts uh, there are a lot of keyboard shortcuts here available for you to interact with with this Jupyter notebook. I mean, uh, you can you can quickly see what shortcut does what um, in in this particular code editor. So um, let's let's start with uh, with variables. Variables are kind of placeholders, or these are. Uh, these are names or symbols that can hold different kind of values uh, in Python supports several kind of variables like integer variables that are that are numbers uh, without decimal expansion or maybe the numbers that are negative or positive but kind of um, the integer numbers or it can it can support the floating point numbers which are essentially the real numbers so for example if I write x equals 2 or y equals 5 or a variable name so so this X is a variable name Y is a variable name X Y is a variable name so if I type just these in 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 the Jupyter notebook so for example X equals 2 shift enter so then I say okay print X so the value is 2 uh, that's the value if I see what's the type of X uh, it's integer However, when you were assigning the type, uh, when you were assigning the value to x, you never specified that it is integer. That's what we that's what we call it as a dynamically typed. But the it, it based on the content, it is going to to the variable. Based on the content, the type is defined automatically. Uh, similarly, y equals five. Um, and by the way, in in the same cell, you can write multiple lines of codes. Uh, you rather than pressing shift enter you just press enter and the cell will expand you can write multiple lines of code and then press shift enter once and all the cell all the codes in the cell will be executed one by one so for example y is equal to 5 and z is equal to 0 0.5 um, and f is equal to for example 6.0 so if I shift enter I can print type of y and then I can print type of by the way this print function allows you to print on on the console so z and then t 
type f and you can see the type of y is integer the type of z is float float is a floating point number or integer or sorry or, or a real number and then the type of f is also float although you can see the 6.0 it is integer i mean it, it is same as six but once you write the point there uh, the type defined to it is 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 floating point number rather than integer there are several other types for example complex numbers and and even decimals or fractions and stuff like so but the most popular data types the most popular simplest data types are are these integers and floating point numbers uh, by the way mm, this python allows you the multiple assignment if you have um, more than one if, if you want to assign more than one uh, values to more than one variables let's say you have variables a b and c you can assign all of them in in a sequence one two and nine for example so a will receive one b will receive two c will receive nine that is called a multiple assignment and by the way this is called comment so comment comment is a statement that is not going to be executed it, it is sometimes uh, explains what is happening it is not part of the code being executed but it is it is something that explains the code uh, in Jupyter notebook it is okay to write the comments as markdown cells I mean you can write very fancy kind of descriptions rather than writing these kind of comments uh, but either way these comments are available so um, so yes we we saw this type a type b and all that stuff um if we if we see right now how many variables are there in memory by the way uh when we when we type this when we type this x is equal to uh, there is a place uh created at memory named with x and that is there in memory and it will stay in the memory until we manually delete this then uh when we declare y z and f like these these variables with these kind of names a memory is occupied similarly abc has occupied a lot of memory uh, uh, i mean some some memory so let's see the state of the memory right now so if we write this percentage whose that is called an inline statement if you write this so whatever variables are available in uh, right now in the in the memory they will be displayed in front of you so a is available its type is integer uh, B is available its type is uh, integer C is available its integer these are the values inside uh, F is a floating point number that's its value X is integer Y is integer and Z is floating point value that's it uh, if we if we are not deciding to use X for example any further we can just delete X by the command del and now if we see the state of memory then the X is no longer there it is out so so this delete command helps you deleting variables that are now in memory manually from yourself if you don't delete them there's a garbage collector that will run eventually and will uh, wash out all the variables that are no longer in use and are not accessible so um, so 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 this deleted there once once the variable is deleted if you if you want to access it because a variable is no longer in memory you have deleted it or you never was you never have created it if you now want to print it you will get an error so because it is no longer there so let me show you uh, for example x is no longer there so let me let me try to print x so let's see what happens so you get this kind of error name x is not defined it does not exist in memory so why are you accessing it so um yeah so these kind of uh, so um this prompt you will you will get familiar with these kind of prompts uh, when you will start coding in python because uh, at the beginning uh, it is common to have many more um, errors um, and reading these kind of error messages is also an art i mean and and seeing sometimes the error messages the the error message is not actually uh, telling you exactly where the error is um, that's a bad thing but sometimes that happens so um, and, and by the way debugging uh, is uh, is is a term um, that is used in these kind of scenarios 
So uh, by the way, you need not to write the code or, or, or just see and write the line by line everything. Uh, all the codes, they are available at this particular link here. So um, the codes are there. You can just see the codes from there. You can download the codes. Although we are writing the code in front of you live, but these codes are available um, at this link. So now, uh, once we have a lot of variables, what we, what can we do with the variables? We can add two variables. We can add two numbers. We can subtract two numbers. We can divide. We can take remainders, multiplication, and a lot of stuff. So let's see uh, different kind of uh, operators and what to do. For example, 2 plus 3. Um, so that is 5. Uh, if A equals 2 and B equals 3, and you write print, a plus B, that's the same stuff. Um, although you have not saved this A plus, the result of A plus B in, in any other variable, you might have stored the result of A plus B in C, and then you might have used C for the further, further processing. Um, what you can see is if one variable is integer, if one number is integer and another integer and another number is floating point, um, then what's what's the uh, what is the type of the result? So if for example we add an integer in a floating point number, then the result will be having type what? So you might be thinking that an integer and a floating point number when they add together, the type automatically becomes a floating point number. If both of them were integers, then the then the result will be integer. If both of them were floating point numbers, the result will be floating point number. Or if one of them is floating point number, the result is floating point number. So um, then you can have division, for example, um, 10 divided by seven, and the result is 1.42. If you just want, for example, the quotient, the, the, the whole integer that is the quotient, or the smallest integer that is closest to the quotient, then you can write, for example, 100 double slash, for example, um, nine, and the result will be an integer number. And that integer will be the smallest integer that is closest to, uh, the, the largest integer that is closest to your, um, actually the closest to your, your quotient. So it is a floored. So if the result, for example, if you see the, uh, the result of um, nine divided by uh, three, uh, nine divided by four, the result is, I guess, uh, 2.25. But if you just go back and do this, then this 0.25 factor goes off and the result is simply two. Um, but this stays the same if, even if you have this 11, for example. So 11 by 4 is 2.75. But you don't think that if I do double slash, it will become 3. It will again go to 2. So it actually rounds down to, to this. So uh, further, if you uh, that, that was about the quotient, if you want quotient. If you, for example, want, for example, remainder. So you divide 30 by 6. Um, or, or maybe seven. So you want to see what is the remainder. So the remainder in this case is two because seven four times is 28. And uh, what 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 is the remainder is, is just two. Further, you can have uh, this kind of operator, this double star. Oh, we have discussed the single star. The single star is used for multiplication. Two star three is six, that's the multiplication. The double star, that's an operator, is used for the power. So that means two raised to the power three. And the result will be eight here. So that's the result. Um, and and I, I mean, these are the operators you can uh, use uh, with different kind of variables, with different kind of numbers. And you can, there is another data type that is very, very special called the Boolean data type, which has just two states, true or false. So for example, let me let me just uh, state here, for example, uh, A equals true and B equals false, false. So these are the two uh, Boolean uh, variables. But Boolean means, um, 
they have uh, for example the, the 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 operations that are kind of if you for example true and true that's an operation and is an operation the logical operation and so true and true always results true true and false always results false so true only results true if it is ended with true otherwise if true is ended with i mean if you apply and operation with true and if the other operand this is called for and this is called one operand this is called another operand and this is called a logical operator and so if one of these operand is false at least one of these operands is false the result is false uh, for example maybe the second operand is so the result is false other than and there is another operation called or for example true or true that is true true or false that is also true so or works like if one of them is true or both are true the result is true it is only false when both are false so and and yet there is another operation called not so not true is false and not false is true obviously not true is false and not false is true because there are only two two states true or false you might be wondering why this is important why i mean true and false and all that that stuff is important sometimes we have to decide we have to check whether a particular statement is true or false for example if you want to know whether 2 is less than 3 or not and you want to decide based on this decision so in this particular case 2 indeed is smaller than 3 and the result is true if the result is true then you will do something if the result is false then you will do some other thing and so on so boolean data types i mean they are helpful uh, when we actually apply these comparisons of different variables with with, with different other other variables and we actually apply the we actually see uh, the result of the comparison the comparison might be whether the two values are equal or not whether they are not equal whether the one is less than the other or whether they are less or equal to I mean some these kind of relationships and the result based on the result uh, that these uh, comparisons the comparison will always result either true or false so based on that true or false you may you may uh, proceed further in deciding where to go um, for example if you just see here um, le let me let me just let me just write another statement for example what do you think 2 is not equal to 3 the result is true because 2 is not equal to 3 that's correct 2 is not equal to 3 that's correct so 2 is not equal to 3 that's one thing the result is true and if I take and true true and true is also true so let me write another statement here 5 is greater than 3 so the this statement is true this statement is true so true and true the result is true and if I just say okay true or false true or false when we have or or false or true when we have one of them is true the result is true so so far the result will be true as as it seems uh, similarly uh, i mean we can have very complex kind of decisions or maybe very complicated decisions and these uh, true or false they will help us deciding where to go um we will we will be seeing these if conditions in more detail later but just give you a flavor if so for example a is equal to input uh, I have not defined the input function yet but just to give you a flavor uh, enter a number so it will allow you to enter something and forget about what I'm doing right now I will explain that later in detail but just just to give you a flavor of these comparisons so that statement will allow us to 
input a number from 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 the keyboard for example I enter the number 45 here um, 45 and then I press enter whatever the number is so what if I have taken the number from the user and then I just decide if a is smaller than 20 then what you do print less than 20 else print not less than 20 let's say um, by the way I'm going to explain this if conditions and else conditions and this to see structure in a much more detail later on in this video but just to give you a flavor of comparison whatever the number a the user will enter that number might be anything if that number is smaller than 20 if that condition is true if this results true then this statement will execute otherwise this statement will execute let's test it for example let's test it enter a number let's say I enter 10 so you see less than 20 if I run it again for example shift enter enter a number let's say 30 it will say not less than 20 so these kind of to see in makings I mean these kind of comparisons they are required uh, to write to to do to see in making and to to go into different paths in your in your program and uh, the result of this comparison is is a boolean either either true or false or and we will see this if con these if condition then this input in in detail later on so um, these are comparisons sometimes sometimes called relational operators uh, we move on we we see some uh, for example um, some kind of useful functions let's see the round function um, round function if I just say round um, 2.3 so it will round uh, the round function if it is applied to a real number a floating point number it returns the integer closest to it so for example 2.3 there are two integers that are closest to it one is 2 the other is 3 um, uh, but 3 is it, it 2.3 is more closer to 2 rather than rather than 3 so it returns um, 2 um, the the tie is at 2.5 and and the default is when you have 2.5 it returns again the round down variant but once you have 2. Point, for example a value greater than 2.5 it will return you a value because now with 2.51 you are more closer to 3 rather than rather than rather than 2 round has another uh, use if you if you use this function round two point four four five five six seven eight and then you write for example three so what it will do it will after the decimal point it will return the three decimal places and in this case two point four four and this five it is rounded up because the uh, the the next values to it is greater than five and so that that kind be so you you might so for what will be the result if I call this at 2 what will be the result I guess the result is 2.45 let's see oh yes what will be the result if I call it at 1 I guess the result is 2.4 just because after 4 the value is smaller than 5 so the value will not round up yeah so that's what is happening so one function is round another function is div mode Div mode actually returns you the quotient and remainder when you divide two numbers together. For example, if you if you write div mode and then you write let's say 27 and 5. So what is the quotient? The quotient is 5, 5. Uh, so 5 multiplied by 5 is 25. So the quotient is 5. What's the remainder? The remainder is 2. So it will return uh, the value in this kind of ordered pair called tuple we will see the tuples in detail later on so it will return this kind of thing uh, diff mode so it's quotient and remainder there are other function is instance for example if a particular value is instance of a particular data type or not so for example if I write is instance and then I say okay one is instance of 
int yes true or false oh that's an error i guess the int should be written without quotes yeah that's an error so is one instance of int yes um, then is instance is 2.4 an instance of int no it's an instance of float so is instance 2.4 float the answer is yes so this is instance sometime um, tries to check whether a particular va uh, variable or value has a type um, that that you're thinking the type it, it should have so then we have a function power p o w power it so for example you have seen just two raised to the power four which is uh, in this case 16. the power function do the same thing two raised to the power four wow so what's the difference power give you one more functionality power function two raised to the power four and then take the remainder by three so what it what this command will do it will take two raised to the power four the result will be 16 and then it will take the remainder by three and if you take remainder by three the answer will be one here and that's what it is so this power function has another uh, kind of functionality that sometimes says oh input we have used this function already input it is uh, used to take input from the keyboard so input and you write here the message uh, enter a number for example so uh, when you press enter it will stop and ask you to enter something from the keyboard so for example 12 and then i press enter so now uh, if i print a print a it will be having 12. but something strange is happening you might be thinking that uh, the type of a you might be thinking what is the type of a you might be thinking that the type of a is integer because i have entered integer well when you enter from the keyboard using this input function the type is str string um, string is just um, i mean a lot of characters uh, one is a character two is a character a is a character b c d f g underscore at the rate of epsilon all these are characters um so so it it just takes the input as characters and and remember somewhere uh, somewhere back whatever we receive from the input we first convert it to integer because it was a string and we needed an integer and these kind of we, we want to apply these kind of comparisons so what we did is we convert that string to integer by this int function if we want to convert that to float we could have written a float there and so on so this int returns a um, string uh, input returns a string and uh, there might be input checks for example if you're expecting a number and somebody have entered something that is not a number so you might be checking on type of a and stuff like so might be is instance of maybe that works here um, for deciding uh, whether a is has the type that you were expecting or not and you may be deciding based on that so uh, don't worry about strengths we are going to cover the strengths uh, in, in a bit more detail later in this video okay so let's move to strengths uh, ready to the strengths strings are just for example s is uh, for example um, this is a python course so that's a string you can string is just uh, a lot of characters and uh, the characters start with double quotes or end with double quotes not just double quotes you can start with them single quotes and end with single quotes this is a python course and we are enjoying learning basics of it so that's it so if we write print s i'll be having this this is a python course if i write print t i'll be having this 
if I ask what's the type of S, it's a string. Okay. Uh, if I just write this print um, S plus T, well, the plus, the, the, the operator plus will concatenate the two strings together and make one string at the end of the day. Uh, so in this case, this is Python course and we are enjoying the learning, learning basics of it. Um, you might be thinking that there should be a space here. So let's include the space as well. So what we do is uh, S plus a string containing just a space then T. So what we did is we concatenate S with a correct, with once with a string that can, that contains just a space and then we have another string. So the result is this is a Python course and we are enjoying learning basics of it. So, and you can write a multi-line string as well. For example, uh, multi-line string starts from, uh, starts like this. So it starts with three quotes and end with three quotes. This is, uh, this is first line. And this is second line. And this is the last line, for example. So if you just execute this and print M, you will get the structure like, much like the, I mean, I mean these are the multiple lines and that's one string. That's one string at the end of the day. So if you see the type of M, that is just one string. Okay, great. Um, by the way, um, if you if you just write these at the start of some, for example, if you have, if you if you go to this and you just write three quotes there and just ended those with three quotes, then that is a multi-line comment, which means all the codes inside is now becomes a comment. It is not an executable code. It is just a description and nothing more. So if you want to write multi-line comments, you can write these uh, three codes to start and three codes to end. Okay, great. So um, strings are much more powerful. Um, we can, for example, have, we can do a lot with, with these kind of strings. One beautiful thing about the string is indexing. For example, let's say we have a string A equals what is your name that's the string for example and then we want to see the for example third character or the third letter in this string so we can just print by the way the the indexing or uh, so for example index is just the position of different characters for example the w has position zero the positions are positions just start from zero H has position one, A has position two, T has position three, and then a space has position four and, and so on. So what if we want to see what's the character at position three? Because positions start from a zero, what is the, what is the, so it, what, what is the character at position three? It is indexed by two because indexes, they start from zero. So that is A. Um, if you want to see, all the characters starting from position to index two and ending at position seven. Um, one convention here is, which is followed is this starting index is included, so it will pick A, but that seventh position, the, the seventh index is not included. So it will pick two, three, four, five, and six, and then it will stop. It will not include the seventh index. And that will return this kind of at space is because that's a substring. Not only that, the Python also supports the negative indices. For example, um, minus one, that's the last uh, index or that's the first index from the end, which is this. Um, print, for example, A. Um, let's say minus three. So what will be printed? 
So minus 1 e minus 2 m minus 3 a. So that is a. Yeah. So uh, you can index different strings. You can you can copy a string, for example, string 2, your substring or substring string true is just a start from 3 and goes to 8. And that's s2. And then you can just print s2 as it is. Wow. One thing that you cannot do is you cannot change a character. For example, um, for example, if you want this to become e, you cannot do this. And the reason is these strings are immutable objects. Uh, immutable objects or in, immutable data types or the data types once they are created they cannot be changed. Um, none of none of the none of the ingredients of that data type can be changed. They 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 just stand what they are, and uh, we will see the mutable types as well. There are other mutable types where you can change um, where you can change things, but in strengths you cannot. Um, so. Um, there are a lot of functions, for example, a uh, strip, uh, function strip that, so for example, we have a string that has some spaces from the start, and then we have, we have a string, and then some spaces at the end. And then we just call a function strip. The, the function strip will do the following. It will delete all the spaces from the beginning and all the spaces from the end and will return the other string that is just, I mean, like this. Further, if we have, for example, a string like we are mixed types, for example, and we call the function lower, then what it will do is it will return all the string, the same string, but all the letters in the lower case. Similarly, um, if you want to convert all the letters, some all these letters, for example, to upper, then the result is like this. All the letters that can be costed to uppercase, they are costed uppercase. The rest of the letters, for example, the semicolon stays as it is, the space stays as it is. So this upper, lower strip, and there are other functions, for example, if we want if we want, uh, for example, um, a equals um, some thing is missing, for example, and we just split that string using comma, then a will contain a will contain sum as a separate word, thing as a separate word, is as a separate word, and missing as a separate word. One thing that you have not seen um, till now is the type of A is list, and we will be seeing what lists are uh, in detail uh, shortly. So if we have A at the zero position at A, we have sum at uh, first position of A, we have thing and all that stuff. So sometimes you can, and, and you need not to, I mean, if you have something that is occurring again and again and you want to split your string um, based on that, it needs not to be comma, it can be something else. For example, you want to split all your string based on i. So need not to be something. So uh, i, if you want to split all your string based on the character i. So what will be the result? Let's see. So that's the first split ha happens here then the second split then the third split and so on so you can split and and need not to be just a character it can be it can be it can be a string as well so you want to you want to split based on a substring so sl split function is really really helpful in in strings and it allows you to it allows you to split based on um, based on the character that you want but it results a list and uh, we will see what list is uh, shortly let's see more functions um, replace or replace function is used to for example if you have uh, if you want to replace some character or string with another string so you have a string for example um, let me so you have a string for example ABC comma 
CDE comma FGH for example and what you do you replace this string and you want to replace this comma with uh, um, this character colon you want the comma should go with the colon so the result is ABC colon CDE colon FGH so you can replace um, a particular substring with another substring not need to be just um, for example if you want to replace um, C with um, with for example this and that so you want to replace C with the upper hat and and sign so you get this kind of thing cool further um, if you want a particular substring is there in a string or not for example if you have a string s equals um, something I mean just type something and you want to check whether a particular string for example a B C for example you want to know that a s in s you want to see whether a s the the substring as is there in s or not so the result is true because a s is there so in this way you can check whether a particular substring is there in s or not it may be there in multiple places but for example if you see a s k k if you want to check whether this is in s or not the result is false so this this kind of in function and you can you can write if condition on top of that that we will see shortly but that's what it is um, uh, one more thing if we want to for example write this kind of statement if you want to write we are learning and then we want this string in double quotes in here so one way of doing this is if we, if we just do this for example print we are learning and we want string here we want a string to happen as a double quote we are learning string in this we want we are learning string here for example and then we end here so when we will top it will give an error because this string starts from here and ends here and this string start from here and ends here and this kind of thing our goal was to just just type this as a, as a double quote so one way to do that is to write the escape sequence we are learning and then just write a slash and then string and then just write another slash and then this and then continue here so that's one way so this slash is sometimes called the escape sequence and it will allow you to um, add, a, add a double quotes inside the string because these double quotes they are used to define strings so um, and another easier way is you start with the single quotes we are learning and then just write a double quotes inside string here that's much easier to to go about that um yeah um one more thing if you write just print uh for example c backslash name backslash drive for example you want to write this path so the result will be c and some weird kind of result and the reason is this backslash n is used for new line so it has printed c then this backslash that's an escape sequence it goes to a new line and then it starts printing this thing from a new line if you want uh, your string to be treated as um, treated as um, as it is i mean the escape sequence they should not be read as escape sequence then one way to do that is to write an r in front of it which means consider that string as raw string and just print it as it is so this r sometimes is helpful to just use that slash as ordinary slash rather than an escape sequence so uh, that's about string there are a lot of other functions of string um, we have a full-fledged course uh, on this python 
a very very comprehensive course we will be going to discuss we, we, we have discussed the strings in in a bit more detail there if you if you're interested in uh, finding out more details of strings do go to AI sciences and just uh, 